Small iPhones aren't really the thing anymore. And today in my hand, I have the iPhone SE, the small iPhone that was released in March of 2016, and the last iPhone to have featured a headphone jack. I've used this phone for the past four months, and if you're looking to get into the Apple ecosystem for a cheap price, then I could not recommend this more than enough. I got this iPhone refurbished off eBay when I broke my Galaxy S8 and needed a replacement. It costed around 220 Australian dollars and compared to most other Android phones around this price range, I would say this definitely beats it. The iPhone SE has the same body design as the iPhone 5 and iPhone 5S and is definitely one of my favourite Apple designs, being more boxier. They seem to have, have used this design in the iPad Pro and I hope they use it in one of the upcoming iPhones since it is truly just such a great looking design. In terms of performance, the iPhone SE has the Apple A9 chip, which is the same chip that's featured in the iPhone 6S, and it's pretty good. However, I find it interesting how the iPhone 6S will get the new iOS 13, but the iPhone SE will not, which is uh, really interesting. So it's got 2GB of RAM, and on Geekbench it performs pretty close to the iPhone 7, and I really can't tell a massive difference between this and using some of the newer iPhones today, thanks to iOS 12 and its incredible optimization. I never really noticed a performance difference when using apps such as Instagram, Snapchat, YouTube and web browsing, and it felt pretty snappy. And I wasn't let down, and it had no problems at all, and opening applications is surprisingly quick, and is pretty much beats some of the newer iPhones, surprisingly. I don't really do much gaming, but compared to the iPhone XS and some newer iPhones, definitely don't expect the gaming performance that you get with those devices on this tiny iPhone. In terms of using the device, the 4-inch display is definitely quite small by today's standards, and it actually fits in the screen of my Galaxy S8, which is pretty funny. So the display is not as nice to look at compared to some of the more recent OLED phone displays, but it definitely beats most uh, budget Android phones and has brilliant viewing angles, which not all budget Android phones have. Typing is, well, quite the experience on this phone, and having used a bigger phone before getting this phone, it certainly makes you realise how small this phone really is. And handing it to someone else who has a bigger phone, it's always fun watching them type and miss pretty much everything. <laughs> But it is great for single-handed use, and I do miss the old days where that was common. The phone was well constructed and is very durable and fits nicely into my pocket, which is beautiful. As well as also having separate volume buttons, and the power button is on the top of the phone, which you don't really see much anymore. So this phone has Touch ID, and I do quite enjoy Touch ID, however it isn't as fast as some of the more recent iPhones, and also it will miss your finger quite a bit, and well, definitely don't try it with wet hands. I do prefer Face ID, and that's my opinion. <laughs> Battery life blew me away with this phone. Probably that's because before I was using this phone, I was using a 5S and had to carry a portable charger everywhere, but seriously, this phone with medium to heavy use would last me the whole day, which is absolutely ridiculous, and I'm not sure about this, but I think it might actually have a better battery life than the iPhone XS which is, well, that's pretty insane if you ask me. Well, the camera is 12 megapixels, and that's the same as the Sony A7S, which is a pretty good mirrorless camera. The camera isn't as good as more recent phones, but certainly better than the Huawei P9 I was using, and the pictures are surprisingly crisp for this size of phone. So in terms of video, the camera can record up to 4K, which is pretty good, so lucky I got the 64GB model, otherwise that would have not been a pleasant experience. But I didn't really use this much for video since I do have a DSLR army, luckily. Oh, and can I just comment, the video stabilisation on this thing is insane. It feels like a gimbal and is way better than any phone I've used before. Which is, well, that is... Mwah.
So that's all for me. The phone is a great option to get into the Apple ecosystem for a cheap price and still performs great even in 2019 and is 100% usable. I could still use this thing if I wanted to. It's not for everyone though, especially due to the small size, but that's the only downside and it's definitely a go if you love headphone jacks, which I do. I do hope that in the future they will release another small iPhone, but you never know and I can't really trust any of the rumours around that at the moment. Well, I no longer have a use for this phone, so I'm going to give it to my brother who currently uses an iPhone 5C. Regardless, that's it for me, and I will see you later. Goodbye.